Am I the a-hole for kicking my sister out of my house after she didn't respect my house rules? Info? Me and my fiancé have a king-size bed. Plus, both of us are somewhat of a germaphobe, and we usually try to clean our house every day to every two days. Long story short, I-29 male am a corporate lawyer and my fiancé 31 female is a real estate agent. And we usually get home quite late, around 7 to 10 p.m.-ish. My sister, 23 female, was kicked out from my parents' house after she failed to pay rent for seven months, and we offered her to stay at our house for the time being. Our house rules were pretty clear, not to touch any of the drawers in mine at my fiancé's room, nor to sleep in it at night as we have two guest rooms fully decked out, and also the fact that when we come home we are pretty tired and usually want to sleep right away, and also she has to clean her room and has to throw away her garbage. For a few weeks, she followed our house rules, but all of a sudden one day my fiancé came home earlier than expected at 5.30 p.m.-ish and found my sister and her girlfriend in our bed doing the devil's tango. My fiancé got enraged and kicked her girlfriend out of our house and warned her to never do it again or she would be kicked out. We thought she had learned her lesson and would never do it again. But last week, me and my fiancé had a function to attend to and we told my sister that we might be late. When we were traveling to the function, my wife started to feel sick, and we drive home immediately. When I opened the door, it wasn't locked. I thought my sister had forgotten to lock it. My fiancé rushed to our room heading for the washroom, but when she opened the door, she found my sister and her girlfriend tangling in our bed again. She got furious and kicked both of them out, and told my sister that if she couldn't adhere to basic decency, she wouldn't be allowed here. The day after, I packed all of my sister's belongings and dropped it to her girlfriend's place. When I tried to talk to her, she called me and my fiancé a halls for kicking her out and was mad at me for abandoning her when no one was there for her. Am I the a hole Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Why the hell did she feel the need to use your bed? I mean, that's just weird. You had some very reasonable, and to be frank obvious, house rules. She chose not to listen to you. She needs to grow up. Maybe this will force her to a bit. Honestly, they probably got off on it and it was a thrill. I had an ex who kept pestering me to do it on his sibling's bed when they went out. Long, long time ago, but he got a thrill from it. Hence, he is a long time gone ex as I didn't. Abandoning her when no one was there for her. And there is a very good reason for that. Not stay home. A free place to live and all she had to do was clean up after herself and not do the deed in your bed. Even gets her own bed in a guest room. She deserved all that she got. Literally all she had to do was not be a willful a home. It's not like the demands in exchange for this generous favor were like total control and indentured servitude or anything. Gosh, the sister's girlfriend really, really should see this as a blinking red flag. Pretty obvious not the a home. It wouldn't excuse her actions, but is there any reason she wasn't using the guest room where she was sleeping? Was it only a small bed or something? Again, doesn't justify it at all, but it seems very strange. The beds in the guest rooms were full XL and had pretty good mattresses. I asked her why she didn't use them when her girlfriend came over, but she replied with it's a hassle to clean them up after they are done doing you know what. Wow, that just makes it so much worse. She knows she's making the bed a mess and feels okay because she won't need to clean up yours? Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother's wife she's responsible for his health declining? My brother, 30, is diabetic, has type 1 diabetes and got it from when he was young. As his older sibling, I grew up watching my parents managing his condition for him. He has always been traumatized by his condition and never come to terms with it to what he used to and still act like his condition doesn't exist. The family, mom is now deceased, didn't know how to handle it because if we let him act like that, then there would be major consequences, so we took it upon ourselves to manage his condition for him. We'd watch his eating habits and correct them, watch his insulin intake and encourage him to live healthy. When he brought his now wife home, we told her how it is and that he can be reckless and in denial about his condition. And so she needed to help and work with us and keep an eye on him. She did her best at first, but started caving in to his complaints about not being able to eat this or that, or when he complains about his insulin intake and having to pay for it. He got increasingly worse the past three months. 
We didn't know exactly what was going on, till his wife called to tell us he was in the hospital because of a hyperglycemic episode. His blood sugar levels were too high, he almost went into a diabetic coma. The reason for this was because he wasn't taking the right dosage of insulin. I talked to his wife and had an argument with her. She said he deliberately kept stretching out his insulin dosage to be able to save insulin and not have to buy it. I told her still she should have had kept an eye on him. It's unfortunate that their insurance is screwed and financial situation is rough, but she should have stopped him and not stood there watching. She said I was being too hard on her, but I told her that if he was doing this under the family's watch, we wouldn't have allowed it, and so she bears part of the blame for him staying in the hospital. She started crying and asked for a minute to herself. I went home because I couldn't see him after waiting for long. My dad called later asking about my conversation with sister-in-law. I refrained from talking about it, but he said she called him and told him everything. He said I shouldn't have said this to her and made her feel guilty. I said I was just disappointed she let this happen, and expected her to be the responsible one if my brother wasn't. He said I have to apologize, but I'm unsure whether I was completely at fault here, because I feel there's a bit of neglect on her part. You're the a-hole. My father and uncle have both had type 1 since they were 5 years old. They are both now late 60s. Back then, it was a death sentence. Docs told them they'd be lucky to see 30. Since children, they were able to manage their health with little to no issues. In my 40 years of life, I've seen my father go into a diabetic shock once, and it was after a day of him pushing himself too hard in a home renovation. Too long didn't read of this, your brother is an adult. As such, it is his responsibility alone to manage his health. His wife is there as a support, not as a nurse. Your parents failed him, and now he's failing himself. You taking it out on her isn't justified. Opie, my brother likes to eat rat poison because he thinks it won't kill him even though it nearly killed him many times. My family had to be vigilant to make sure he didn't eat rat poison. When he married, we said it was his wife's responsibility to make sure he didn't eat rat poison. He ate rat poison, which is obviously his wife's fault, so I confronted her. Literally everyone. Um, isn't it your brother's fault because he keeps eating rat poison? Opie, what an utterly absurd thing to suggest. You and your family are a-holes. Your brother is the biggest a-hole. He is a grown man who is responsible for not neglecting his own health. Tell the doofus to stop eating rat poison. You're the a-hole. Your brother is 30 freaking years old. He is a grown adult. His wife cannot be on donut watch 24-7. She can't take food out of his hand. She can't force medication into his body. He is an adult who has made self-destructive choices about his health. I know it's hard to hear when he is in the hospital, but his own irresponsibility is what landed him there. And if you are going to point the finger at his wife, you should point one even more at your parents. Y'all's enabling has allowed your brother to grow up into the irresponsible adult he is now. I hope your brother recovers. If he does, the come-to-Jesus talk you need to be having is with him, not his wife. You're the a-hole. Could not agree with this more. Your brother needs to grow the heck up and manage his condition like an adult. His wife visits his nurse, and shame on all of you for being such terrible enablers. And therapy. I don't get how the parents could watch him grow up like this and not get him any professional help to deal with his trauma. Did they expect him to grow out of it? And when he didn't, were they just hoping they'd be there to help till he'd be old enough to go to a nursing home? She's his wife, not his mommy. Stop treating women like your caretakers. Next story. Am I the a-hole for downplaying my daughter's accomplishments for the sake of her twin brother? So, I, 40 female, have fraternal boy-girl twins, 17. They are graduating from high school soon and they've both done good in school. And I'm overall proud of the young adults they've become. My daughter is going to an Ivy League school and playing soccer in college, while my son decided to go into the Air Force. One thing to know about my family is that they think college is the only way to be successful. So, they were very pleased to hear my daughter is going to an Ivy League school, but they have nothing to say about my son going to the Air Force. I can tell, as his mom, that it's making him feel bad. Even my daughter doesn't want her brother to be seen as less successful. So, on Easter, when my mom brought up my daughter again, I told her that she has a grandson going to the Air Force, 
and that he's going to be very much successful in whatever field he decides to do. And he should have respect from everyone for helping our country. Everyone started getting upset and saying that is not right to downplay my daughter's accomplishments. My daughter even tried stepping in saying she's proud of what her brother's doing, but they didn't listen. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong, but I could be. So am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. Talking up your son's incredible accomplishments is not downplaying your daughter's accomplishments. Maybe try to kill him with kindness. Anytime someone starts gushing about your daughter's Ivy League, out gush them and say, I know. I can't believe I hit the kid jackpot. A daughter starting college, a son building a career in the military. I'm the luckiest mom in the world. Yes, this is what I came here to say. I second this. All of this. You're not doing or saying anything hurtful to your daughter. And she's backing up her brother and clearly wants the rest of the family to be supportive of him too. You're doing the right thing by sticking up for your son. And I'm sure he'll remember it. You're doing a fantastic job with them both. Definitely brag about it. Not stay home. I thought you would be by the title. But you're not downplaying your daughter's accomplishments at all. You're talking up her brother. And it sounds like your daughter agrees and is also proud of her brother. The Air Force is pretty strict and hard. You must be super proud of both of your children. I'd be pissed off too if one child would get all the praise and the other wouldn't. Downplaying your daughter would be... Well, Ivy League is actually not that big of an accomplishment. But you didn't do that. You just said that the Air Force is also pretty great. Which it is. Again, I'd be super proud of both of them. They've both done excellently. And keep sticking up for your son without undermining your daughter, which is what you are doing. You are nailing parenting right here. Straight A's. Thank you. From what they've done in high school, they've proven to me that they both can be successful as adults with or without a college education. I mean, my boyfriend works for the Air Force actually. Not the USA, so I might be wrong on this. But from here, you get a pretty decent education. First, a military education, and then you can choose to do school with work if you want to move further up the ranks. The military usually pays for everything, with a wage. You can get all kinds of degrees there. Not saying he has to, but he can at any time. Last story. Am I the a-hall for telling my mother that I don't mind another family member cutting me off? Hello, I'm 30 female. Growing up, I had a cousin who was very close to my age, so we were together all the time. Around 10 years old, the comment started. She'd tell me how my hair looks messy while hers is perfect, and how she can't play with me because she doesn't want to look as dirty as me. Then her mother got involved too. Every time I got higher grades at school, she would say I had easier exams, and if I got hurt, she would have a long tale of how her daughter was brave and doing 10 times more than me. When I was 13, my cousin, her mother, and another family member decided to confront me about my clothes choices. I was a tomboy and my parents let me participate in any sports I wanted. They kept telling me that I need to be more like her and she stood there beaming. I reacted badly. My mother got involved and told me that these comments shouldn't affect me and I need to ignore them, but kept making me go out with her. The comments never stopped, even grew to, you will not marry and such. The second my parents couldn't decide how I spent my time, I stopped talking to my cousin. Now, she recently had a child and they didn't tell us. I'm fine with that, but someone close to her told us and my mother wants me to call and congratulate. I told her I'm not sure if this is a public knowledge or she just told people close to her. If she doesn't want me to know, then I don't want to know, and that's fine. My mother says that I did something to make her hide this, even though they didn't tell my mother either and said I have to call and stop being petty since I got married and had a kid long before her. I said I don't care if I hurt her. She can cut me off if I make her feel bad. My mother thinks I'm a bad person for saying this and I can't be bothered to mend fences with family members that rise above things. To be honest, I stopped being angry long ago. I just don't have anyone with this mindset in my life. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. My mother says that I did something to make her hide this. You monster. You stopped accepting her emotional abuse and self-glorification. Edit, I want to clarify that the sentence above is sarcasm. You heartless bastard. How could you do that to your poor cousin? It's all sarcasm, people. 
not stay home. One, genetic proximity does not confer an obligated relationship with anyone. Two, forgiveness is overrated. It often used as a tool to allow abusive a to keep being abusive a Three, most times, the only consequence we can bring to bear on an a is to remove ourselves from their lives. And that's what you've done. Yes, but what is unfortunate is Opie had to do it on her own after a certain point. Her mother should have put a stop to that crap years ago. She didn't, because she did not want to make waves with the other relatives. How did she not know these people were mistreating Opie? She wanted their acceptance more than she protected Opie. Girl, no. Leave those toxic people exactly where you left them. I feel like Opie isn't recognizing the toxicity of her own mother. While Opie was getting bullied growing up, the mother turned a blind eye to it. Opie should cut her mother out as well. I can't imagine not standing up for my child, especially if I am witnessing the bullying happen. Opie's mom is a bad mother who cares more about these family members over her own child.